My relationship with Amelia, I think, is probably very similar to many mother-daughter relationships. We have a very similar personality and have spent the last five years side by side. I love the term girl dad. That just kind of sums me up. She's always been full of energy. So she wakes up shot out of a cannon, but I just love her spunk, her energy. Our family moved homes um, in November of 2020 and started the hustle and bustle of the holiday season and she started getting fevers and we were worried that something was going on. This was in the height of COVID. We didn't know if she had some sort of illness. I'd give her baths most, most evenings and um, I started noticing some bruising on her legs when I'd give her a bath and she was almost three years old. She played sports, played at the park. So I didn't think too, too much of it. Um, but they, they started to become more prevalent and the ones that were there weren't going away. And it wasn't until right after her birthday when she started limping very badly that my husband and I were afraid of something bigger that was going on. So we took her to our pediatrician. He gave her a full physical exam. So as a parent of one child, she gets a cough and we think it's time to rush her to the emergency room. And we bring him to the pediatrician. He's very calming, just amazing, never shows any concern. And so my goal of when we went was I wanted to, I wanted to see what his face looked like during the process. So he gave her an exam. He had her walk up and down, up and down the hall. that's when I saw his face change. So as a parent, I knew that if he seemed worried, I was pretty worried. We went as a family to get Amelia's blood work, came home, and a few hours later, our pediatrician called us with the worst case scenario news. He said, Amelia has cancer. At that moment, everything froze we fell to the ground and weren't quite sure what to do. Anytime you hear the term cancer with a girl that just turned three years old, that you're that your baby girl, uh, it, it was shocking. When you hear the words that your child has cancer, nothing else matters, and you can only go into survival mode. We went to the ER Friday night, and by Saturday morning, we were up on the oncology floor at the hospital. They told us, Amelia has leukemia, it's confirmed. She's gonna lose her hair, but she's gonna be okay. These next two and a half years of your life are gonna be really hard, but she's gonna get through it. The first few days in the hospital were brutal. Um, scary, uh, sad mad. They started an intense chemotherapy treatment along with steroids. The steroids changed her physically um, so much. She didn't know how to control her emotions whatsoever. Um, she could not control her appetite. Mike and I spent the nights crying. We took a shower crying, but in front of her really um, tried to put a brave face so that she wasn't scared. We weren't allowed to have any visitors in the hospital. We weren't allowed to leave. Really, it was the three of us for the next nine months. I think the hardest thing was to see her lose her hair. It was a physical reminder that she was sick. It was a physical reminder that she was battling for her life. And I think it made her scared, which broke me inside. When she lost her hair, I am. Um... I joined her, so I lost my hair. Every morning, I would wake up and go peek in a room and see if it was starting to grow back or not, and, 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 it, and it wasn't. So I would just go to my bathroom and just pick my head real quick, and we'd sit around, a couple of bald eagles in the, in the family room here, and you know we just kind of embraced it. 
I've personally known about Make-A-Wish since I was a young child. I had a high school friend whose sister battled cancer and their family got a wish granted. So just a few days after we got out of the hospital and our initial diagnosis, we got a phone call from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. These were the positive, fun conversations where we weren't talking about cancer. We asked her if she wanted to go somewhere, if she wanted to be somebody, if she wanted to meet somebody. The one that kept coming up and the one that never left our little stack of what could we do was, was zookeeper for the day. Amelia has loved animals since she was a baby. She has had a different favorite animal almost every week. Uh, so she was thrilled when Make-A-Wish granted her a wish to be the zookeeper for the day. So our family went down to Miami for the week and we're put up at a nice hotel. We had all different activities to do on the beach and just act like a normal family, which we hadn't acted like or been able to do for quite some time. After years of saying no to stuff and her you know, accepting no all the time, when we were granted a wish, um, this was our opportunity to say yes to something. Amelia will probably tell you three or four different things were her favorite thing for the day. But I think for Mike and I, our favorite thing was her waking up that morning with a smile we hadn't seen so big in probably a year, saying, I get to be a zookeeper for the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. I'm going to be a zookeeper. We went to the chimpanzees exhibit, and they threw Amelia a party. They had a sign for Amelia, um, and we're playing and eating the sign. And at the end uh, of our time there, one of the real zookeepers came out and they gave us a finger painting that one of the chimpanzees named Samantha did for Amelia, which she still has today. And from there, we went over to the elephants um, where they listened to commands um, from Mr. McGill and would show Amelia tricks and she would ask him to tell them to do stuff and they would do stuff. So just things you, even as an adult, I've never seen animals do. I got to feed some giraffes. I got to um, I got to go in the tortoises' pen. I got to go behind the scenes and see a salon. And I also got to see some animals and um, have lunch with my family. It was just amazing to see Amelia surrounded by animals which she loves have a day that didn't have anything to do with cancer. It wasn't on our minds. It wasn't what we were talking about. We were just enjoying being together as a family. When Amelia was first diagnosed, we um, we were approached by a lot of different charities, and we said no to, to just about all of them um, because there's there's things that we didn't we didn't need. But Make a Wish was the one charity that did stand out. No three year old, five year old, seven year old, any child should have to go through cancer treatment. It's awful. It's horrendous. It's life changing in a terrible way. And so to, you know, to wake up in the morning where she was glowing and could put on her zookeeper outfit, you know, I, it just, it, it really brought life back into our family. You have no idea, even a small donation, how it can affect a young child's life. So if you could give up your coffee once a week or going out to lunch once a week and making that donation to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, it makes an impact that goes way beyond your donation. Whatever you can donate could truly make a child get to that finish line of treatment. Thank you, Make-A-Wish. So after two and a half years of treatment, just last week, she got to ring the coveted bell at the clinic that we've spent so many hours at. Watching her walk down the, the hallway leading up to the bell, um, other than weddings and giving birth to Amelia and her little brother Clayton, it's been one of the greatest days of my life. Amelia is in remission, Amelia is cancer free, and Amelia is finished with all chemotherapy. No more chemo.